Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today, back to working over on my Lucas Horizontal Boring Mill. We are getting really close to being able to actually use this on a project. I pretty much have the machine ready to go, but I'm needing a couple of accessories that I don't have for it uh, to do a job coming up. So guess what we're going to do? We're going to make them. Uh, we got a machine shop, so we can do that. So here's the challenge I got. I am wanting on this tailstock end down here to basically take, I'll have a live center that can go up into the tailstock end. Now, right now, what we have is just a bronze bushing in here that like a boring bar can run, rotate in. And uh, this is three inches in diameter. I'll get an exact measurement on it a little bit later on. Uh, but what I need is I need an adapter to fit up inside of this bushing that goes from that three inch straight uh, diameter down to a number five Morse taper, which is what is on this big live center that I've got. So uh, again, we're gonna make it. I've got a block of steel here, uh, mystery metal, really doesn't matter what grade it is for something like this. Uh, we're gonna take it over to the lathe and we're gonna do some machining to it and we're gonna turn this into just what we need to be able to mount the live center up here on the tailstock. So um, let's head over to the lathe and get to work. I've got my chunk of metal over here in the metal lathe and uh, we're gonna start by facing this, putting a center in there to get some support. And we're gonna turn this uh, down to uh, three inches, I think is what it needs to be. I'm gonna go get an exact measurement on that bore, but three inches is the nominal size it needs to be close to. Let's uh, go ahead and face it. Oh. It's always the risk when you got a long piece of metal sticking out like that. Yeah. That's the reason you want that support on the end from the uh, live center. We'll take a little bit lighter cut this time. I'm gonna take my time on this and uh, get that trued up. I think it's going to take one more pass. And I think we got it now. Still just a little bit on the end, but we're going to turn that off anyway. So let's. Uh, Go ahead and get our center put in. All right, that should be plenty of support for the center. And now with the live center in there, I can come in here and take some pretty heavy cuts and not have to worry about whether it's going to come out or not. All right, let's uh, cut across there. Starting out with about a 50 thousandths cut. We got a little bit of run out in it, which is turning out. But once we get down here toward the bottom, it's going to get thicker. So I kind of compensated for that. Just taking a much heavier cut right there. Probably gonna skip out of there a little bit. We're barely touching, but now we're getting back into heavier cut. And it's gonna get even heavier right here. All right. Gonna continue on here. I'm actually cutting about 150 thousandths off the diameter. 
I got a lot of stock to remove, so we're just gonna take some fairly heavy cuts, get it knocked out. I'm gonna get that turned down close to three inches and I'll uh, bring you guys back in a little bit, but uh, we're just gonna do some heavy turning until we get down there. So guys, this is where I stopped at. Um, we're about 50 thousandths over our final size. I let this cool down real good and uh, just want to go ahead and finish. I want this to end up probably a thou or two over three inches. I was measuring that bushing in there and it's supposed to be three inches, but over the years it's worn a little bit. It's about 305 or, or 3005, about five thousandths oversized. So I might shoot for making this a thou or two oversized as well, just to take up a little bit extra room in there. But uh, let's go ahead after this is cooled down and uh, finish, get it to final size. You can tell the thing was hot. I haven't moved the cutter, but as it cooled down, that metal shrunk. The heat expanded it, and you can tell the cutter's not touching right now. So we'll uh, go ahead. I'm going to just dial in. Let's just dial in 25. And we'll get another measurement and finish turning this thing out. I'm just dialing in. I'm going to dial in the 3003 on my digital readout, which is about right there. It's about three thousandths oversized. This should be the final pass. Yeah, that's fun. I think we can finish the cutout though. Got a little bird's nest in here. that out of there all right i think we're done here with our turning anyway i'm going to take this out of the lathe we're going to go test fit it actually i want to break this corner over here first before i do that though i'll put a pretty good chamfer on there about like that and now i'll take it out and go test fit it I've got my part turned around now. We've got it in the uh, four jaw chuck. I've indicated off of here and we're running true. I did take it over and test fit it. It fit just fine. So uh, we're good to go here. I want to go ahead and turn the outside of this, just clean it up, make it running true, face it. And then we got to start drilling and boring it out for that more taper. Um, so let's go ahead and get this knocked out. Start out here on the end. I just want to basically just clean that up. I need a little bit more. Good. And we'll come over and face the front. I'll put a fairly large chamfer on that front. Come out here to the back. 
to just break it pretty good. All right, I like that. So uh, next we got to start drilling this out. And because there is a hole already in there and that hole is not running true to the um, machine here, um, yeah, I need to figure out what I'm going to do on that. Let me, let me ponder on that a minute. Well, guys, there just isn't an ideal solution to this problem. I've, that center hole is going to be wobbling a little bit. What I've got here is just a really long drill bit. And I'm just going to go ahead and try to get a hole through here. And there's probably going to be a little bit of run out in that hole. Once I get a big enough hole all the way through, I can come in there with a boring bar and straighten it out and get it running true with the, uh, with the, the actual part. But right now, I just need to get a hole through it that I can get a boring bar through the part. So I'm uh, just going to use this long drill bit and uh, get her done. We're all the way through. All right, we're going up a size here. Got a one inch drill bit. And we're gonna see if we can finish drilling that out. Yes, my bit is wobbling a little bit, but uh, kind of is what it is. I'll squirt some cutting oil up in there. And continue on. Getting down close to the end of my drill bit here. I don't know if it's going to poke through or not. Feels like it's right there on the edge of it. But that's as far as I can go with that drill bit. And here we go up another size. Uh, this is one and what is that, 25, 60 force. I want to be just a little under uh, one and a half inches. I've slowed my uh, uh, speed down a little bit, about 200 RPMs. And we'll go ahead and run this one through. that we're probably going to switch over to a boring bar and uh, true that hole up i need to get it out close to inch and a half i think for that number five morse taper uh, to start reaming that so i'm gonna let this cool down and we'll be back we are ready to go ahead and finish boring this on out to final size uh, basically guys what i'm going after here is just a clearance hole we're going to take a uh, we're actually going to use the boring bar to start the taper 
in there, get it roughed in, and I use a reamer, a Morse taper reamer to finish this thing up. But right now, I just need a clear hole all the way through there, about an inch and a half in diameter. It's not a critical measurement uh, for this step. It's just a clear hole all the way through. So right now, we're at about 1.4 inches, so I got about 100,000 still to come out of there. Got a boring bar in here. Sticking out a good bit, we're gonna take some fairly light cuts. We're gonna get a little bit of a, of a vibration probably on this as well as a little bit of a flex while it's cutting. So uh, we're just gonna have to take our time and uh, get it knocked out. Uh, once we do that, we'll go ahead and start putting the taper in. So I think we're ready to go. I'm gonna come here and touch off. And I'm just gonna do about 25 thou. This should also clear that bore out. It's got a little bit of a run out from that drill bit. You can hear it kind of skipping as it goes. Uh, but this boring bar should get a good true hole all the way through there. Well guys, I went to a little bit larger boring bar uh, after we opened it up just a little bit. And this is a lot more rigid and I'm not getting as much vibration and chatter down in that bore. Uh, I still probably got about another 20, 25 thou to finish opening this hole up, but this is making a huge difference. Uh, like I said, I just need to get it a little bit bigger to get that boring bar in there, but it's, uh, it's, it's looking good now. We'll get another measurement after this pass and uh, hopefully one or two more passes and we'll have it up to that inch and a half size we're shooting for and we can move on to the next step here. All right. All right, I'm gonna move my cutter in just a little bit so I don't drag it out. And uh, we should be where we need to be here. I'm just gonna make a caliper measurement to confirm. Yeah, look at that, we're right on inch and a half. All right, uh, let me get set up to do the taper and we'll start boring that and finish it up with a reamer. So to cut this taper, what I'm gonna use is the taper attachment on my lathe. This is a feature of this lathe that will actually allow you to cut a long taper at a specific uh, angle or uh, taper, whatever you wanna call it. And basically the way this works is, is there's this bar back here on the back of the lathe. You can rotate this, um, whatever angle you wanna put it at, and uh, you tighten up the half nut here. So basically it's not, the, the in and out on this is not being controlled by the handle, the crank anymore. Now it's being controlled by this uh, taper, taper bar back here in the back. So basically when you move the carriage, this is fixed in place. There's an anchor here that locks this in place. And when you move the carriage back and forth, it's sliding on this bar. Like I said, this bar is connected to the cross slide. So as the table moves forward, it's going to automatically move it in at whatever taper you've got this bar set at. Now I did the math and I uh, looked up the taper, a number five Morse taper. Let me find my notes here. It is um, point 6315 inches per 12 inches. That's the taper that it is. I went and calculated the angle. It's a little over three degrees. 3.012 degrees is what that is. And uh, what I've done is I've gone in here and I've got this taper attachment roughly set up on that taper. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn close. And it's really easy to measure this because I have a digital readout on here. It will you can go in here and measure the in both axes, the X and Y axis. So what I did was I, I was, uh, went out here, I got to a point, I zeroed both axes. And because again, it's not being controlled by the handle up on front, it's being controlled by here. I just moved the whole saddle down. I didn't have room to go 12 inches, so I did three inches. And again, I did the math and it should come out to 0.1578. Um, 157, almost 158 thousandths over three inches. And right now it's reading 151 
or let's just say 152 thousandths per three inches. So it's not perfectly on the angle. I'm just trying to rough this in. I'm just trying to get material moved. I got a reamer that we're gonna use to actually cut that final precision taper. Uh, but this should get me pretty darn close. Like I said, I'm just trying to get some material hogged out of there. So we're gonna come in here, use the taper attachment. We're gonna rough in that angle. And uh, once we get that done, we'll get to use the reamer to finish it up. Just a quick look here at the uh, digital readout. Again, I moved the, uh, the Z axis here three inches and it moved the uh, X axis 151, 100, just 151.6 thousandths. Uh, that's 10 thousandths down there. So, you know, we're, again, we're not perfect, but it's close enough. I mean, I could sit over here and fiddle around with it and get it reading dead nuts on, but since we got the reamer, I'm not gonna worry about that last little bit. We just wanna get material moved. Let's uh, go ahead and rough this angle in. Let that feed in. Again, it's following that taper bar. It starts cutting, it comes out pretty quick. I'm using the, uh, the compound on here to pull it out. Here we go, another pass. Starts off cutting because it's cutting a taper. It's through. Next pass. Notice I go way back and bring it back in. It just takes the backlash out. Sometimes when you start going from one direction to the other on this taper attachment, it takes it just a little bit of room uh, to get the backlash out of it. Now we're getting close to our final size after this pass, I think. May need to do one more. We're getting that taper cut in there. I'm just listening to this. I can kind of hear it when that cut stops. And I'm backing my bar out. As this is moving in, it's also slowly moving back and that's what's giving us that taper as it cuts. So this is the Morse taper reamer that we'll be using. I wanted to show you this because uh, I actually unwrapped this. This thing was still in the original wrapper. And uh, this, uh, I don't know if you can read that. It looked like it was kind of washed out. It's not very bright on this background, but Norse tape, Morse taper uh, socket reamers finishing US Navy reamer set number three, type F, number one to number five inclusive. This one was made by the Mil Mil Millersburg Reamer and Tool Company out of Millersburg, Pennsylvania. This was made for the United States Navy, most likely uh, World War II era. Uh, it was a standard set that would have been put on like a ship, a repair ship, or on an aircraft carrier battleship, something that had a big machine shop. This set was pretty much, when I got it, new old stock. It had never been opened, never been used. I have used, uh, I think, the number one and number two reamers. These two are still have not even been unpacked and I just unpacked the number five reamer. It was wrapped up in this wax paper and then had the uh, paper on the outside of it. 
almost hate to unwrap it, but guys, I, you know, I'm not going to have tools around that I can't use and I need it. So we're going to use it. Uh, but I just thought I'd show that because I just thought that was neat. So guys, this is a hand reamer. This is not a power reamer. So we are going to use it as a hand reamer. I'm going to put some oil up in there and I'm just going to take the reamer. We're going to put it in here and um, kind of keep it aligned. There is a center hole on the back of this. So we're going to run this up in there and kind of put the uh, center in place there. And I'm just going to take a big wrench here. And we're just going to ream it a little bit. I'm going to put a little pressure on it from the tail stop. That should keep everything nice and aligned. This is just going to remove a little bit of metal at a time till we get it where we want it. Make sure I got plenty of oil up in there. cutting. This reamer being precision made, this should match the taper, the Morse taper perfectly and it will fix any of those deviations that we had. And like I said, I know my rough boring job there was not perfectly on size, but this reamer will get it there. I'm probably about as deep as I need to go. I'm going to go just a touch bit more. But you can tell it's cutting all the way around. When we first started, we were getting that kind of squeaking sound. That was uh, where it wasn't cutting evenly. But as we went a little deeper, it's been it's cutting deeper and deeper. All right, one more. Little bit here. All right, I'm going to take it out and we're going to do a test fit with the uh, actual uh, piece that fits up in there. Yeah, that's going to be perfect. Got to go in a little bit deeper once I get it cleaned up. You see all the shavings on there. I think we're where we need to be though. All right, good job. See how we did here. So the bushing goes in up here. And that's a nice snug fit. And then the... Uh, Morse taper goes in right there and now we have a center that will mount up here on this tailstock and should be parallel with the uh, spindle on the other side which is what I was after. Now um, this is designed basically to run in this bronze bush and normally a boring bar would go in here. In this case we got a live center so there's a bearing in here. If it does rotate up here on the in the back, no big deal. Uh, if it rotates up here, no big deal. So uh, it should go either way. Now, there isn't anything holding it in from coming out this direction, but because of the way this is going to be used, it's always going to be pushing in. So it's just going to have to go up against this. I thought about making it long enough to go all the way through and put a big nut on the back of this. There really wasn't room for that. And really, there wasn't a need for it uh, because, again, it just, 
it can just slide up in there because it can't go back any farther and there's really no reason in use why it should come out the other direction. So anyway, um, job done. I'm happy with that results. Uh, and got to do some boring, some taper boring, some reaming, all kinds of fun stuff over here in the machine shop today uh, to get this out. And guys, with that, that is going to be a wrap. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up and comments are always greatly appreciated. Hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Big, huge thank you to all the supporters who support the site on Patreon, PayPal, etc. We could not do everything we do here without you guys. And uh, with that, we will sign off. We will catch you on the next video and uh, continue on with restoring some machinery and doing stuff in the shop out here at Vintage Machinery. So guys, we'll catch you next time. Thanks again for watching.